Hi everyone, welcome at the shop's garage. We're looking very empty. So those of you that watch regularly will know that before sat here was a Honda, we've been a bit empty for a while, but before there was a Honda Civic sat here that I had a strange customer come a long way for to have a look at. It was a one owner from new, low mileage, full service history, paintwork was fantastic. It was just a little bit of bubbling on the alloys. And he looked around the car for two minutes and said, that's not for me and disappeared off without saying any more, which we thought was a bit strange, didn't we? Well, they say these things happen for a reason. I've just had the nicest lad buy it from me. His name is Alex, came along with his dad, had a look around the motor. Yesterday, we had a good long test drive in it. Came back there, another look around it. Negotiated a deal on his park exchange, which we'll look at in a minute. And he just come back and picked it up today. But just the most respectful and grateful lad. Really, really nice to see. He saved up his money to get out of a get into a bigger car because his hobby's fishing he wants something he could fit more stuff in but yeah really really nice lad so um we did a bit of a deal he's had that he's happy as larry with it and he was you know have you know we had a discussion about it I said look i could have done all the alloys i could have done all this other stuff but i just kept really raised raise the price point raise the price point and some people were just happy with the car at a lower price point with a few blemishes and he was so Good to go. So we'll have a look at his part exchange, but we've also just bought a bundle load of other part exchanges. Let's have a quick look at those. So here we go, we picked up a bit of a trio. They're all actually really quite nice cars, this bunch. I mean, I'm sure they hide some, some faults for me to find along the way, but I've driven all of them and they all drive nicely. Uh, so what have we got at first? We've got a 2013 TT. This has got the two liters, the TFSI. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if some of them are just TSI and some are TFSI. I know nothing about my Audis. But I know it's a 2 litre turbo. Uh, 2013. It's a nice colour. I really like the colour. You know the score me. When I take part exchanges in from dealers, I tend to just take everything we've got without question. I don't turn the link down because there's always a home for it somewhere. The alloys are a bit bad on it. They've got a nice brightness to them, but around the edges they're really chewed up. They need a proper reefer, but we've got Pirellis, and we've got Pirellis all the way around with pretty much new tread on them. So whoever had it didn't mind spending a few quid on it. I say really chewed up here. All these alloys need doing. Probably need the wheels balancing as well. But paintwork wise down this side, really nice condition. Nothing to note paintwork wise down here at all. I really do quite like this colour. It's a little bit like that Nissan I did that time. That Nissan note there was a sort of a goldy brown. Some light scuffing down there on the front of the bump. I think that might polish out. There is a bump down here. Nothing too serious. It's caught the edge of the paint along here, which has been touched in. Scraped it a little bit there and pushed that part of the wing in. But I think that will actually easily pop back out again there. Well, not easily, depending on how much you take off to get to it. It's got a little ding up there on the wing. This alloy, again, is a bit chewed up. But yeah, Centuro... P7s all the way around. It's not cheap rubber, is it? They weren't running on a budget. Although that said, service history wise, we're a bit short. We've got last sort of three services from Quick Fit, um, but we have got the name of a garage that are doing other servicing for them. And apparently, if we ring them up, we're going to have a lot of info. Now, you might have just heard a noise there when I opened the door. Let's try and get it done again. We might hear it as we're looking around the car. I think one of the speakers, there's an aftermarket stereo system, which is quite nice. It's got a reversing camera in it. But I think one of the speakers, there you go. I don't know if you caught it there. I think the wire into one of the speakers is bad. So that needs looking at. I imagine they've kept the original Bose speaker. So the wiring is probably at the back of the actual head unit that's been done bad, badly. But yeah, it's got leather, which is in nice condition, front and back. None of that has got any major wear on it at all. Now, as you can tell by the Diet Coke can, I've spent many, uh, many a time driving it over the last couple of days. It drives really nicely, really nicely, actually. Um, it's like a grown-up Suzuki Swift. It handles really well. It pulls real bucket loads of torque. You can get up into sixth gear really early, six-speed box. Bucket loads of torque. It's just really refined. It's quiet. It's smooth. There is a, I think there's a wheel bearing needs doing on it. I can hear the hum of a wheel bearing. But other than that, I have to say, suspension wise and everything else, I'm just fiddling around trying to get the keys for it. Suspension wise and everything else, I can't knock it at all. Starts on the button. I've checked the oil and the uh, coolant and the levels 
are staying where they are. They needed a bit of a top up. You can hear it go clack again there as soon as the power kicks on. Definitely do with that head unit. 87,619 miles. No lights on the engine at all. Idles nicely. Came with half a tank of fuel. I've done a quarter of a tank of driving in it. Came with quarter of a tank of fuel. I've done nearly, uh, sorry, came with half a tank of fuel. I've done nearly a quarter of a tank of driving. I've done a lot of miles in it. Um, it's a really easy car to drive. You don't feel the need to go particularly fast, but like I say it does handle really well. This head unit is a nice upgrade because, like I say, you've got the reversing camera, and you've got your Bluetooth. You've got USB input. I think if you plug in USB as well, you could probably play movies through it. Like I say I've got a, got a load of paperwork in the glove box, but it's only like three services in there. But like I say we have got the name of a garage, but I haven't rung them up yet because the reality is I think I will probably trade this out. Now, it's really just a case of we've got the wheels to refurb, so they've got to go out. They, they need a proper proper refurb. They're not something I'd do here. They want the tyres off, really, and proper refurbing. I don't think it's something I could tackle here. I think they've had a bad paint job before, and they really need sandblasting back or dipping and then re, uh, you know, redoing properly. I think you'd probably want to do the bit of paint down here. There is a little nick down here in the corner of the bumper. You probably want to do a little bit of paint down there if you're going to retail it. And there is, I did find a little bubble on the arch here. Someone's missed a stone chip. They've got a stone chip there and they've left it and it's bubbled under the paint a bit. We've got the stereo to sort out. Then none of them are major things, but I'm just so short on time at the moment. And to be honest, no disrespect to anyone, but I find sports cars buyers a little bit of a pain in the bum. They're going to want it absolutely perfect and I'm a bit short of time. So plan is, I think, trade that out. Trade that out to someone um, it'd be a nice piece of stock on the right forecourt. Now this is more my piece of stock, I'd say, is the C-Max. Again, a bit bigger than I normally do, but it's a really nice colour. It's in really good condition. There's no paint for me to do on this, so I, you know, other than I think there's a scuff down here, and I don't know how much of that might polish out. If not, we've just got to do a little bit of paint down there on that corner. All the alloys are in really good condition because they've got proper sized tyres. That's a problem when your rim is level with your tyre. That's when your wheels get curved all the time. So yeah, all the wheels are in good condition. There's no paint to do on it. And it's a seven-seater. So I think it should be a good retailer for me. It's a 65 plate, so mid-2015. It's very clean inside. It's not going to need much in the way of a valet. Not the TT needed much away in a valet. It's got these sliding doors. I haven't had one of them before that, like that. So you've got the full sliding door. Sorry, I'm still on my phone at the moment. I've got to get myself a new GoPro. But all the fabrics are in good condition. All the carpets are in good condition. All the plastics, all the buttons, everything. It's got a good service history. It's a local car. I think it was like, it's I'm trying to pull it from the back and up. This is why I break things. I just try and manhandle them. Um, Blights is local, it's in Biddeford. So it's a local car. People tend to like that. I don't know what difference it really makes, but they do. We've got two keys. The mileage, it's keyless, so I just hit the button here. My foot on the brake. Oh, where am I? The only problem I've got is the people that <laughs> had it are Polish. Yeah, the only problem I've got is the people that had it, let's start it. A Polish, and they kept driving over to Poland to visit family. It's done uh, 78,000 miles. They kept driving over, uh-oh. We'll just keep rolling for a bit. Yeah, they, they kept driving over to see family and they've got everything set up in Polish on here. So I need to get in and change that back out again. But yeah, I had a little drive this one. This is the 1.5 diesel. So we need to uh, check that the temperature is going to be all right and all that kind of good stuff on these because they can sometimes have trouble with head gaskets and things like that, can't they? But I did get it up to temp and it seemed to be all right, but we'll go for a longer run and check it. But I think in this color, seven seater with decent mileage, it should be a good little car. What do you reckon, Pete? As you've interrupted the filming anyway. Very nice. It's a nice color, isn't it? I was saying to the guys that that seems a bit more retail stock for me than that Audi TT. Pete's going to carry on his inspection of the uh, 
C Max there. And the last thing we got was this little Citroen C1, which is uh, just on the subject of that, actually. That is one of my favorite engines as well, isn't it? The 1.5 diesel. I think they, they do pull, pull really well. Well, we'll let Pete carry on with his inspection. So yeah, a little, little Citroen C1. Now we know I like a Citroen C1 as well. They do really well, don't they? I love the simplicity of the engines. There isn't a lot to go wrong. Cheap to ensure. They hit the target of first time drivers, family runabouts, you know, exactly the kind of thing I like to be in. This one's quite new for me, 2018 with 40,000 miles on it. It's some kind of special edition because you've got the alloys, the chrome wing mirrors. You've got these graphics, which unfortunately, as graphics do, have faded even in the short, well, I guess for me, it's a young car, isn't it? Five years old now. But it's still a nice looking thing. It doesn't really spoil the overall look of it. Paintwork again is is great condition. Inside, I've got the right keys now. I'm unlocking the wrong car, Pete. Yeah, none of the alloys need refurbing. I looked for it. I think there was one. There's a tiny little bit of curbing on that one. There was one over here that had a few more marks on it, but I don't think I'd do it because these aren't even expensive cars in 2018, are they? Yeah, inside's in nice condition. Well, the fabrics are good. Being a five dog gives a bit more flexibility to the purchaser. So again, I can, I'm gonna suit the family run around as well as the first time driver's car with five doors, whereas the three doors tend to be the first time drivers only. We've got the um, Bluetooth. And this one has the reversing camera as well, which is a nice little addition. And cruise control. So cruise control, Bluetooth, reversing camera. It's got the... Uh, it's got the um, system that allows you to sync your phone to it. Let's go into the, yeah, the, there you go. You've got your connection system there. Obviously auxiliary input, Bluetooth for your phone. And I said, if you go into reverse, it's got your reversing camera as well. It's super clean. It's a 2018 car. You'd hope it was. Half a tank of fuel again, 40,865. I uh, can't remember service history wise. Oh yeah, that's it. I didn't have the service book on this one either. I think they're promising to bring it in, but that never generally happens as a rule once they've done the deal, unfortunately. So we'll have to do some phoning around and see what history is. But again, this one to me looks like a no brainer retailer for me. So comments down below. What do we think I should be hanging on to and what do we think I should be getting rid of? I've given my opinion, give your opinion. Do you think I'm mad for letting the TT go? Do you think I should just put it in the corner until I'm ready or try and sell it as it is? I don't think it'll sell as it is. I think it needs to have all that done for the kind of person that's a TT buyer. I think that seems to be a bit of a no-brainer to hang on to. And so does the C1. So, but yeah, I'll be interested in your comments down below. I'm not going to test drive them for you because I think the general consensus is that you're not really that interested in the test drives. So I'll just say that drives bang on, that drives bang on, and that drives bang on. I didn't have any concerns about anything, I say other than the drive shaft on that one. I didn't really have any concerns about anything else with them. Now, Pete stuck in to have a look at my latest purchase, which I don't know if I've shown you guys or not yet. So uh, I'm going to turn off camera and go and stop him from fiddling with it. So Alex's old part exchange here, MOT through till December which only had two minor advisories on it. Check the sump on the 1.2 petrols. You've got to get underneath and check the sumps, make sure they aren't rotten. This one's good. Got underneath, had a look at the rear subframe, make sure the spring pans weren't gone, the rear beam was rotten. That was good. The last MOT on this one's got an MOT through to December. The last MOT on it only had two minor advisories. As you can see, it's in really nice condition. It's just got a few scrapes on it. I say, so in most of it's in really nice condition. It's just got a few scrapes on it. So this corner of the bumper here, and then over here, it's got a dinged in rear arch there. Now, obviously these are reflected in the park exchange price I took the car in, but I actually still think this will be a good little run around for someone. Unfortunately, as you know, it's not the kind of thing I can retail. I just cannot be doing with the hassle of retailing a car of this age and value. There isn't enough margin to be able to do the level of repairs I'd normally do, which would include putting a cam belt on it because it's got no history of a cam belt, doing that paintwork, um, and getting a fresh MOT on it, it has to be sold off as a trade car to someone cheaply. There we go. As I said, it's, it'd be something really nice to retail because I like, well, not like retail, retail, but have as a cheap car for someone because I know so people, so many people need 
cheap cars with the market so tight at the moment. This interior is in really good condition. With a wet clean, it'd be immaculate actually. But I say there's no history of any cam belt, so I'd have to do that. I'd have to get the paint done there and the other side. So you're immediately what? Probably because I can't haven't got time to do the paint myself at the moment. You're immediately probably six hundred pound into a car that what's it going to be? I think looking around with all the paint done, the cam belt or MOT maybe nineteen ninety five something like that. Then you got your vat. You just you can't make any money out of it and give the lad anywhere near a half decent price unless he was giving the thing to me free as part of the deal. You can't really retail it and make money out of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with now. Mike the Valeter wants a little cheap run around for his daughter, so I think he's going to swing by potentially and have a look at it a little bit later on. But yeah, it's good. I mean, it's got Goodyear tyres on it there. I don't know what the front ones are. Yeah, a little drive in it. Goes through the gears all right. It's got that traditional boing boing from some top mounts that need doing on it. I said I did so many of these, didn't I, back in the day. That I can kind of go around and blindfold and tell you what's wrong with them. But yeah, lovely, lovely lad. Um, yeah, just spot on, spot on way to do business. Credit to his to his parents, he was. 